good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. I know we were supposed to start at 630. We we're trying to give people a little bit more time to get here, but our lovely staff have been working all day, so we want to be mindful and respectful of our time. Um, so again, my name is uh, Commissioner Whitney Kenner-Jones. This is my first town hall meeting, so I'm very thankful and excited that you all have come out tonight. Um, I hope that this is a great opportunity for you to learn more about what is happening in Douglas County in general, but specifically what is relevant to you in District 2. So we want to make sure that you have an opportunity and time to ask any relevant and pressing questions. Um, the directors are very thorough, and they'll be excellent at making sure that you all know what's going on um, at any time. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to interject. I really do want this to be an interactive process because I really want to know what's important to you as community members. Um, so we're going to start off with our transportation update. I know lots of you are probably excited about the extension that is coming to Lee Road and those things. So we're going to have Director Suleiman Rana come up and tell you about that. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Suleiman Rana. I'm the director of Douglas County Department of Transportation. Um, welcome to the District 2 Town Hall. Uh, today, uh, I will be presenting uh, our active construction projects, our active design and right of way projects, and a sneak peek into our upcoming projects, uh, a look at our application for our future federally funded transportation projects, and lastly, we'll look at our maintenance and resurfacing efforts that our department's responsible for. So the first, uh, first project that we'll talk about is Lee Road. Uh, Lee Road is definitely very near and dear to your hearts here in District 2. It's the largest active construction project being conducted by the county. Uh, the total construction cost of this project is roughly $21 million. Uh, the project limits are from I-20 to Fairburn. Uh, the scope of this project is to double the number of travel lanes, add a median, add a multi-use trail on one end and a sidewalk on the other. And then one thing you'll note as you drive through that corridor is the heavy utility presence within the project limits. And that, that has been part of our biggest challenge on the project. Uh, given that the construction is one of the largest that we're delivering in the county, this is the largest utility relocation happening in the county also. Uh, there are roughly eight to 10 companies involved in relocating these massive utility structures from WSA to Austral Gas, Greystone, AT&T, and Comcast, and many others. And then also, uh, some of the challenges that our contractors are dealing with are uh, uh, traditional to the construction industry in terms of labor shortage, inflation. But I'm happy to report that our staff, all parties involved, are making progress every day. We're coordinating and resolving issues as they come up, and we're hopeful that we'll reach a completion of this project in a timely fashion. Where we stand today is uh, our projected completion of the full project is in Q2 of 25. However, we, we are aiming to achieve substantial completion by end of this year. As you might have seen by driving by the project, there are a few, uh, many new roadbeds that are almost ready to go. So our goal is that by end of this year, we'll open up those newly built sections for traffic and then close down the older part of the road and start construction on that area. Our next project is New Manchester High School Sidewalk. This is a sidewalk project with the goal of connecting New Manchester High School to the Boundary Waters Park. This is roughly three quarters of a mile. And uh, as you know, the park is on one side of the road, the school's on the other. So about midway from Boundary Waters, there's gonna be an alignment shift facilitated by a pedestrian signal to ensure safety of all users, and then it ultimately connecting to the high school. Uh, we're way ahead on schedule on this project. Uh, we were at about 90% complete as of last month. Uh, the only thing that's outstanding in this project is uh, the equipment and material for the signal. Once erected and uh, programmed, this project will be open for public and more importantly for students. Uh, we're very excited uh, about this project. This is a series of about, this is the fourth uh, sidewalk that we uh, will be finishing, uh, funded by SPLOS 2016. So we're very excited uh, uh, for this completion. Our next project is, again, in District 2, Spine Road. Spine Road is roughly half a mile of a tangent off of Fairburn. Uh, 
And as the name suggests, I think this, this road truly will be the spine of uh, multi-million dollar economic uh, development in the county. Uh, this road is designed to facilitate the developments that you see on Fairborn, uh, Fairburn, such as the movie studios, uh, the Foxfield developments that's going to have a hotel, multifamily, commercial spaces, and multi-use developments across this uh, roadway. This will be the fastest county-delivered transportation project. We started, we broke ground in February of this year. We're anticipating completion by August. So we're, we're pro making progress every day and very excited for that completion. And as you can see, by summer of this year, we'll have a lot of ribbon cuttings coming up. So our staff's working hard every day to make sure that that happens as scheduled and as budgeted. So. Um, Next, another project we'll talk about is Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard. This is not necessarily in District 2, but I'm sure all citizens uh, use this area quite often, if not year-round, especially during holiday seasons. Um, this is a very heavily used intersection. Uh, when we were studying this intersection, one, uh, a one turning movement that we identified was for now northbound traffic turning right onto Douglas Boulevard, uh, which has caused excessive delays and uh, congestion at the intersection. So the goal of this project is to add about 600 linear foot of uh, right turn lane uh, uh, dedicated for the turning movement. This will alleviate the congestion, uh, ensure smooth flow of traffic. And uh, we're, we broke ground on this project uh, last month. We're anticipating completion by end of this year. As you can see in the picture, uh, there's a lot of utility involvement in this project too. So a lot of the timeline will be dependent on when those utilities will be moved out. This is roughly $600,000 project um, that, uh, that we hope to complete by end of this year. The next slide will... Uh, Next slide will show you a sneak peek into our upcoming projects. These projects are anywhere between a concept phase to design to right-of-way acquisition and will soon be coming into construction as, as they finalize those uh, uh, last few uh, uh, tasks. Um, I won't go through uh, each one in detail, but I'll quickly touch upon a few. Uh, these seven to eight design projects, the first one on top left you'll see is Straight Route 166 at uh, Chapel Hill. We're designing a roundabout for this intersection. Uh, 120 at Post Road Interchange, we're bringing interchange improvements with addition of turn lanes and a signal for eastbound approach. Uh, we're proposing or designing Chapel Hill interchange improvements and acquiring right-of-way for Chapel Hill widening from West Chapel Hill to Dorset Shoals. We have an 11-mile trail planned here in District 2 connecting Boundary Waters to Sweetwater Creek State Park. Um, we are proposing uh, splitting up this project into three phases. The phase one will start off at Boundary Waters, connect you guys to Fairburn, and then eventually each phase will progress thereafter. And lastly, you'll see two additional Lee Road projects, more, more Lee, Lee Road coming to District 2, right? <laughs> exactly what you all need. Um, Lee Road, and the goal is goal here is to uh, expand on the section that you see under construction right now and provide a further eastern-western connectivity for our citizens. When done, this will be a 10-mile corridor starting from US 78 all the way to Chapel Hill. So these two other phases that you see, one will take it up from I-20, connect you guys to US 78. The phase three, which is the Lee Road extension, will pick up the project from, I, uh, from Fairburn, connect you guys to Bomar, and then through Bomar to Chapel Hill. So end of the day, we'll, we'll have a mini 285 here in Douglas County. Uh, both of these, or all three of these projects, will be accompanied by multimodal components such as trails, sidewalks, and of course the, uh, the enhanced capacity corridors will provide more opportunities for our transit agency to expand their services. Next slide is a quick glance at our upcoming application to ARC. Um, these are the federally funded projects that we're proposing for fiscal year 25 all the way to 28. This will be our largest grant application with a total cost of roughly $71 million if the board approves. Um, our local match will be $14 million, but these are for different phases, different projects, and will be scattered throughout the next four to five fiscal years. Two of the projects that we have already talked about is the extension, uh, the trail, the construction phase will be funded out of this application, but the two new projects that we will be adding is Chapel Hill widening and a multimodal component sidewalk and trail on Riverside Parkway. So um, DOT engineers have been hard at work and uh, yeah, uh, our, our shared goal has been uplifting county's infrastructure and as you look through these projects you'll see a shared theme 
of uh, achieving long-term objectives while also solving short-term issues. And one of the things we try to do is we, we try to leverage all possible funding sources. So some of the projects that we've just talked about, uh, they include federal, state, local uh, funding, and a combination of all three in some cases. Um, so the next slide will cover our resurfacing and maintenance needs. As you know, Douglas County owns over 800 miles of uh, roadway here in the county. Over 700 of those miles are in the unincorporated areas. Uh, we own over 40,000 signs across the county, and that's a lot of uh, maintenance to perform all across the county limits. Uh, to put this into perspective, it's roughly half a million dollars to resurface one mile of roadway, and it really limits our ability to do what's needed and what we should be doing as a county in terms of resurfacing and maintenance of our transportation infrastructure. Regardless, we, we do our best. Since 2016, leveraging SPLOS 16, SPLOS 22 state grants, we have resurfaced about 131 miles in the county since 2016. Uh, we are also, uh, we have a sign management plan, uh, first time in the county to basically uplift the signage outlook across the county. We are planning to replace or install over 4,000 signs this year in the county, which is 300% more than what we did last year. And end of the day, our staff works very hard to do the best with the resources that we have, with the funding that we have avail available as of right now. And uh, there's, there's no shying away from the reality that the demand and resources have a big gap that, that must be bridged over the next few years. But regardless, our staff remains proactive. Uh, they work very hard to ensure that our citizens' complaints are addressed on time, and all the resurfacing maintenance needs are performed to the best of our abilities. Um, I'll stop here, and I think the questions will be entertained towards the end. Um, we have a little room now. Okay, sure. Well. I'll stop here for a few minutes for any questions if you may have. Any questions? Yes. So resurfacing really should have its own significant dedicated funding source. Um, what we've seen, uh, some of the success stories we've seen in metro counties is larger portions of either splosh dedicated towards resurfacing or a standalone funding mechanism, for example, t splosh that could certainly you know, provide you enough volume to make an impact. So put this into perspective, if uh, we're proposing roughly 11 miles of resurfacing this year, which is the double that we should have done uh, on a yearly basis, and that's because of the overlap of splash years. But what we should really be doing is roughly 35 to 40 miles. Um, so the cost difference is clear. Uh, the, there's roughly th a factor of three difference that, that we're short by. And it's, it's, it's not a minor gap to fill in terms of uh, finances. Just 11 miles are costing us $5 million. So um, that's, uh, I think that's the best way to go about it, uh, a dedicated funding source. Any other questions? All right, with that, I'll hand it over to the commissioner. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Director Rana. And I just hope people recognize that this portion of the presentation is so important because I noticed that the number one um, need of this community is to make sure that we have robust public safety. And so I want to make sure that we're giving enough credit to how um, our transportation, our road usage and things like that really do make it possible for your um, fire trucks and things like that to get to where you are. Increased signage enhances their ability to get to you. So this is super, super, super important um, for our community. So thank you for all the hard work that you do. Um, I'm going to now call on Director Duncan so that she can give us a planning update. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for um, thank you for being here this evening. I'm going to do this. I think. Okay. And uh, my name is Allison Duncan. I'm the Planning and Zoning Manager. I apologize for being a little bit tardy, but when you drive a car with 200,000 miles on it, sometimes you need to stop and think that maybe it's time to, to kind of try to avoid these mishaps with, um, with uh, car issues. So again, I apologize for being here late, um, but I'm glad to uh, share with you a couple of exciting projects that we're working on. Normally, when I am up here in front of a town hall, I'm saying the word comprehensive plan over and over.
over. Many of you came to our comprehensive plan open houses, and so I'm really grateful to see you uh, continue to stay involved uh, in understanding what we're doing. So the two projects I'm going to share with you this evening came out of the comprehensive plan, right? So you say we do all this planning, when do we see what comes from it? So I'm going to tell you about two things that we're working on right now um, that are the outcomes of the comprehensive plan. And I think I'm supposed to say, next slide. All right, so um, the model mile uh, is a great place to pick up where Suleiman left off, right? So he had talked to you about some exciting trail projects that we have going on, uh, the connection between Boundary Waters and Sweetwater Creek State Park, um, and then also some great work that they're gonna be doing in conjunction with some road widenings. So in addition to that, uh, we are using $250,000 of SPLOS funding to design what we're calling our model mile of our trail. Right, and so a bit of a misnomer because as Director Rana said, we already have some trail projects underway, but what we're gonna be looking at uh, is to identify a place where we can start to build out what I call the bookends of the trail. So I'm gonna talk to you about that in just a minute, but, but what I think you see behind me here are examples when I talk about a model mile, when I talk about a trail project, we're talking about lots of different aspects of our alternative transportation network, right? So there's side paths, there's on-road shared facilities, um, there's uh, greenway trails, um, and so the pictures behind me show you an example of all of the different things that we're contemplating as we look to build out 16 miles of connectivity for our trail corridor. Uh, next slide. All right, so when I talk about the bookends, Director Rana had also had already indicated to you that we're working on kind of a spine through the center of the county with road improvement projects, and those are gonna have a combination of sidewalk and multi-use trails on either side of those road improvement projects. So we're looking at what does it take when we get to either end of that, you know, to make sure that we're building in connectivity to our neighborhoods, to our recreation assets, and things of that nature. So what you uh, see in front of you here is the uh, so this is what we're calling the, the southern terminus of the uh, network, and this is an opportunity where we can connect um, multiple green spaces that we have here in the county at the Dog River Library and Park, the Pumpkin Town Park, uh, and the Little Bear Creek Nature Preserve. So we're currently working with the PATH Foundation to examine what would be the potential uh, for connecting those uh, green space areas through the neighborhoods in that area. And the next slide, please. And then what we're calling our northern studying area focuses right here in Lithia Springs, looking at those opportunities to connect Woodrow Wilson Park over to Lee Road, where Director Rana had already shared the update about all the improvements we have going on there, um, and then also to Sweetwater Creek State Park. So like I said, we're working with the PATH Foundation trying to uh, connect these two parts of the county so that hopefully we'll have one long corridor that brings you all the way from Lithia Springs down to Winston. And I think it's really exciting, um, but I hope you think it's really exciting because this was something that came up not just in the comprehensive plan, but it came up in the comprehensive transportation plan. We talked about trails in the context of the transit plan that Ron is gonna talk to you about. Um, and then as a, as a precursor to all of this, when we did our strategic plan, we heard a lot from the community about building more trails. So I'm very glad to stand up in front of you today to say we're doing that. There's a model mile card over on the information table. If you wanna click on the QR code, see when our next meetings are. Uh, May 13th is gonna be our next meeting that we have coming up in regard to that. Um, and then y'all know you can take my card and reach out to me if you have any questions or if you wanna get involved. Um, so let's go to the next slide. This is just a schedule overall that hits on some of those dates that I had just shared with you. Um, and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Livable Centers Initiative. I think if we go to the next slide. Okay, so we are working on the Highway 92 Livable Centers Initiative update. Um, anybody come to our open house at Deer Lake Park? So yes, thank you. We saw some, some friends out there for that. Uh, we had about 60 folks attend over the course of the two hours, so we were super excited about that. If we can go to the next slide. So uh, many of y'all may recall back in 2007, we initiated our first Livable Centers Initiative study on Lee Road. Um, the Livable Centers Initiative is a program of the Atlanta Regional Commission. Basically, they used transportation dollars to leverage you know, good land use improvements so that we make sure that we're investing responsibly in our major infrastructure investments here in the county. So back then, we studied that corridor of Highway, of highway 92, and we identified three made nodes um, at that corridor. Uh, next slide. So what I think is important to identify is that a lot of the work that you see you know, on Highway 92 now, particularly near that intersection of Highway 92 and Lee Road, that was one of those three nodes that emerged out of that initial study. And we said, hey, there's a, an opportunity here to develop more intensely at this node. And if you look at the, uh, the rendering here, um, that's gonna be on my right, your left, um, that was kind of one of the original concept plans that came out of that study. And if you look closely, 
right? You're going to see some things that look familiar. So the double row of uh, overstory trees along the road, uh, the enhanced sidewalks, the uh, four-board fence there along the periphery of the road, the, um, the commercial improvements there, right? So that rendering, if you look to the pictures on the opposite side, you can see where that rendering has been brought to life through the implementation of that highway uh, corridor overlay that was adopted in conjunction with the LCI. So I share this here to say, this is why it is very important that we have the community show up and participate in these plans, because in Douglas County, I'm very proud to say that we actually implement what we put in our plans. And here's a real-time example of how we're doing that. Next slide. So when we had our open house on April 16th, and again, thank you to all of the people who showed up to that, I wanted to share with you a few key takeaways from what I heard in that meeting that kind of surprised me and got me to think a little bit differently about the corridor. Um, now, you can find all this information on our website, as usual. Um, you can find the whole summary document and see a lot of the information that I'm sharing with you here. But the first thing that got my attention is we asked people, OK, initially, we looked at three nodes, three major intersections for enhanced development. So what do you want to see in terms of like how that's moving forward? And I think that we got you know, a lot of feedback that said, let's not do two, let's not do three, let's really keep it at one, right? So let's really kind of focus on where we started making those investments around Lee Road and Highway 92 and make that our major node and then otherwise keep the corridor functioning as a transportation corridor. Um, so that was kind of really interesting, got my attention. I wasn't expecting that, but it's good feedback. And next slide. So these are the other three things that got my attention. And I don't want to say I wasn't expecting it, but I was surprised about how much the community kind of gave us some very clear feedback on the direction they want to see us take, right? So in terms of housing, I've heard a lot of feedback about the type of housing that we're bringing on this corridor, but we always welcome more. But if you notice the um, medium density housing, Right? The more green dots you see, the more people responded well to it, the more red dots, the more they didn't like it. You can go into that summary document and see there's some images that had a lot of red dots on it. So we got that message loud and clear. Um, but this surprised me you know, about kind of how much support there was uh, for that medium density housing. Sometimes we call it missing middle, you know, but that's things like duplexes, um, accessory homes, accessory buildings, uh, or excuse me, accessory apartments, um, and then kind of like a a, a condominium type project, a cottage cluster type housing. So, so that kind of got my attention um, in terms of how well the community responded to that idea. The other two, I was not expecting at all. Um, but the idea of uh, what we called quality of life, but placemaking, so public art, um, kind of creating a sense of identity for the corridor uh, through uh, tactical urbanism um, and kind of encouraging creative industries. I was not expecting to see that much green. In fact, I was kind of thinking that people were going to come and say like, this does not look like Douglas County. What are you talking about? Um, but I was really surprised to see that we got such a positive response to those elements. So that's probably going to elevate, in terms of our priority, the work that we're doing on kind of arts, culture, and creative industries here in the county. Um, so that was some great feedback on that. And then the third piece, again, we expected to see folks say, oh, we want to uh, mitigate congestion and we don't like all the traffic. But I was really surprised to see how much support there was for those alternative transportation networks that we're building, like the trail project. And so that's what that final slide showed. Uh, next slide. So again, if you're wondering where all this is coming from, I do have to put in a shameless plug for our comprehensive plan. It is on the website. So if you want to know what the planning and zoning department is up to, you can go to the website. You can look at any of these three documents, and you can get a sense of where we're heading with our land use and development direction in the county. Uh, next slide. I would be remiss if I did not talk about zoning, right? Because one of the things that I hear most commonly when I come to town halls or when I'm out in front of the community is, how do we know what's going on? So once you kind of check out the comprehensive plan and see the direction that we're moving in, also make sure that you look for these zoning signs. But I hear people say all the time, it's not big enough to see what's going on. So once again, I'm going to reiterate, do not smash your car up trying to stop and see what that little sign says on the side of the road. Um, if you see a yellow sign, call our office, right? ask us what's going on. Um, you can find all of the draft agendas on our website. You can find all the staff reports and packets on our website. Um, but just, again, big picture takeaway. If you see any of the zoning signs or if you have any of the questions about land use planning and what's going on, please plan to reach out to us and then show up at the hearing and make sure that you make your voice heard as a part of that public hearing. And I'm hoping I kept to my seven minutes. Um, but if there's any questions, I think that's my last slide. So, Any questions? Sure. Of the building. 
right? So there currently is an architectural corridor, or architectural overlay to the corridor. Um, it was based primarily on that rendering that you saw. So we do um, have a requirement now for high quality finished materials on our current uh, buildings. And then we also have a requirement for a 40 foot landscape strip that has, you know, a combination of the fence and the overstory trees. Um, from an aesthetic point of view, those are sort of the big picture takeaways. There's some other design details and things like that when you get into our corridor overlay. That being said, you know, there's been a lot of changes on that corridor since 2009 when it first went into place. So one of the things that we're really going to be looking at throughout this LCI process is feedback um, in terms of, you know, are we getting it right? Do we need to change? You know, are there other things that y'all want to see happening in terms of the aesthetics of the corridor? But again, going back to that placemaking board really got my attention that the community really does seem to feel strongly and care about the aesthetics and what that looks like. So, so that's awesome. Anything else? All right. If not, I think I turn it over to whoever's next. Thank you so much for that, Director Duncan. Um, so I hope that you all are as excited as I am about what planning and zoning have going on. That's probably my favorite piece of city planning and county planning. Um, and so I know you know that the way that a, a community feels makes you feel at home and want to continue to come back there and experience it. So I'm very, very thankful for the work that you all do. Um, and how we get around is super important also. So I think that is a perfect segue into hearing from Director Roberts about our transit. Or Connect Douglas, sorry. Yes, buses. <laughs> Just got to read the room. Has anyone here, um, has anyone here ridden any of our buses? There you go. There you go. Guess what happens Monday? They're free for the rest of the year. We want to thank the Board of Commissioners for that. We also want to um, go through real quickly uh, what we did for our transit master plan. As Allison said, we don't let uh, plans sit on the shelf. We, we implement. We do have a, um, a transit master plan that was adopted in December of last year. And now we're rolling out the new routes. So we're very excited about that. The plan was the first transit master plan done since the inception and creation of the fixed route transit agency here in Douglas County, which occurred 2019. It's very hard to get a transit agency off the ground. Very hard. COVID didn't help. Um, but we're now on the precipice of being able to provide a better service for the community and an opportunity for them to ride for free and uh, see what they think about it. As I mentioned, we went through a almost 11 month long process with our transit master plan. I don't know how many of y'all participated. We had surveys, we had meetings, we had a lot of outreach. We had over 1,700 particip participants that uh, gave us information about uh, what they wanted to see and what they wanted to have in the county. And we looked at that and, and, and divided it out over several different years. One of the reasons that we're able to do the changes now is because it's in our existing budget, which was adopted last year, so we can make these changes under our existing budget, which we think Eric and I, my deputy director, is here today. And uh, we think it's going to greatly enhance and improve the performance of the network. Next slide. Yep. So we're going back to our regular uh, regular hours um, before COVID, pre-COVID hours, uh, to uh, add that extra hour in the morning for people that are, are getting to work, need to get to their jobs or their appointments. Uh, we think that's very important. We also. Um, are putting in for some uh, much needed software and equipment and things like that that we haven't had. Personnel counters so we can see. We've got some uh, projects lined up for uh, some bus shelters and things. I think on one of the slides for the uh, LCI, which we are, I've been working with Allison a little bit on that because we want a transit presence. That's how you get some of the funding for an LCI is having a transit agency. So we've looked at that, and then um, I think the next slide is going to highlight the uh, the yeah. These are our, this is our existing route system, which we had some problems with, and I think we had heard uh, through the TMP process that some of the citizens did as well, especially the one that started down a tributary back here, and then 
when we've got a multimodal transportation facility center like we do with the bus platform, it's always better to start and stop those, those, those transit routes from that central point. That gives you more opportunities for people to get back to the center, get on another direction or another bus for them to go. So we didn't feel like these were laid out and the transit master plan working with that group uh, helped us to define what we really needed to do and we're very excited about it. Next slide. So we've actually, um, these are the new fixed routes. Something that uh, we're very uh, proud of is the 40 down here through Fulton Industrial. We have the 40 that goes to Six Flags already, but we have an, another route which will intersect with the MARTA 71 and 73, a direct connection to MARTA, which we've never had. We are looking at years two and three and on down the road, what we can do to get to HE homes and possibly even airports. <coughs> Plan didn't just outline fixed routes either. It outlined uh, on demand, for the rural part of the county. As you know, Douglas County is a very unique county and it's that everybody's over here where we are. But when you get out to Fair Play and Winston area, it gets kind of sparse, but there's still, there are still individuals that need transportainment, transportation. And we had a transportainment program that we uh, funded for, for a while there that showed the need and the desire for people in that area to get to appointments and to feed into our network. Next slide. Yeah, so the next several slides are just uh, the different routes. Route 10, next slide. 20, the 30, and the 40, and our new route, 50, which goes north up to Autry Circle, across from those apartments in that complex off of Dallas Highway. Very excited to have these routes. We've been in the field, staff has been in the field moving uh, the bus signage around, getting the new signage in place. And uh, <coughs> we're looking to actually get that done just in the nick of time for Monday. So nothing like uh, cutting it close. Um, and next slide. That was really wanted to open up for some, some questions, really. I wanted to make sure that you all know and share with every one of your neighbors about the free, free fares and the new routes. Doesn't cost you anything. Just get on the bus, go see where they go. See how it fits you. Uh, we welcome that. You got any questions or anything we have? We are actually located at the Multimodal Transportation Center, which is right behind the courthouse. And uh, come by anytime if you got any questions or anything like that. And I'll take some questions. Do we have question time? Okay, okay. <coughs> where can we get the list of what it stops at we have some the we have our, our programs over here but we I can give you the um, right now it's probably best to pull them off the website we're getting them back from the printer and then we're going to get them out all over the county we, uh, we have some but those are I think the ones that we brought today are, are, are the the older routes by mistake Apologies for that, but uh, you can also check out our website, Connect Douglas. If you go to that website, it has all these routes. It also has a copy of the TMP, which is a very interesting document, and that lays out the microtransit and the on-demand components that we would be looking at in the future. How many people would you say ride the bus on a monthly basis? Probably around 3,000. Okay. Thank Three you. to four thousand. That that's ADA. As you know, the, the American Disabilities Act requires that you have ADA service. American Disabilities Act around three quarter mile buffer from any fixed route. So that question includes those individuals as well. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any plans um, to have an app so that people can track or watch where we, the bus routes are going? Great, we have the Passio Go app now, and that's for the fixed route. Um, we were in a meeting today with uh, some other software agencies about scheduling um, for the uh, paratransit rides and being able to group those trips, which is gonna astronomically improve what we're able to do. 
but for now the fixed routes are easily downloaded on the Paseo app, which is a great place to find it too. So you don't even have to come by, sir. I forgot all about that. It's been a long day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ron, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? <laughs> so I, I know based on getting this information out, we have a lot of communities. You have a lot of HOAs. Yes. Are you looking at going to some of these HOA communities that, you know, the, you, you know, you have these presidents, you have all these ones that's there that can actually help you get the information out? Because a lot of people really don't know. And I don't know how it's being put out so that the residents would know, because in my community, we have seniors in mm -hmm. the community, and they would surely love to be able to take, you know, the benefit of getting to different places inside of the city, and then also knowing where those stops are, because he hit a valid point, is just trying to mm -hmm. figure out where the stops right. are. And so that app, I didn't know it was there. Yeah. So that's going to be something that's very key that we can put out to people in the community to let them know. Yes. And Brookmont's huge. So uh, anything that you need, you know, you can, if you guys have an event and you want somebody to come out, we do have a, a young lady on staff that we hired last year. Okay. Actually, a couple months ago. You may have met her, Simone. She's ready to do these kind of events. She's got quite a list of things already lined up as it is. But if you have a, if your HOA has, I think y'all have an yes. internal document anyway. Yes. Or I can send you everything, there's links to everything for, for, for your, uh, your neighbors and everything. So. Well, to, to kind of help you out, we're actually hosting a, a HOA summit at our subdivision. Mm -hmm. So that in June, I think it's June the 22nd, but I'll get the information over to you. And sure. So with other HOA presidents in, in coming out to that, mm -hmm. that will be one of the ways that you can get that information out. And I will invite that's any, a, that's all the people idea. from there to come out to that. You're right, Orc. I don't think, think of all these things. I know I had, we had a list of HOA presidents when I was in, in, in contacts when I was planning the zoning, so I remember completely just to, to do that. Uh, we'll definitely put you on the list, and I'll get the new list. Do you have a new list? We have yeah. a new list anyway, okay. so I'll make sure that we cover that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. It's good to see you. And can you spell the app really quick for people who want to P-A-S-E-O. Go. <laughs> so, thank you. Is anybody else? Because, all right. Good deal. Thank y'all. How's it going? Just really quick, what plans are there for future anticipated routes? I think one of the things we need to do is start anticipating what our citizens will need versus waiting to see what the feedback is. Do we have anything in the, in the works for that? A couple of things. Um, one thing is that the, the transit master plan, 47% of the respondents said they wanted some access to the airport. We've looked at that. We're looking at that. We continue to look at that. There's several different ways to skin that cat. Um, well, we've thought, uh, I've talked to ATL staff about maybe, you know, they are actually doing things in Gwinnett <coughs> and Cobb along those corridors to get people, um, to bring people in and, and home. And they share a, a proportionate funding opportunity with those counties. That may be on the board for Douglas, for us to run something from here to HE Homes directly. If you get to HE Homes, you can get to the airport. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, have uh, explored the opportunity or looking at just a direct route. I've talked to uh, airport staff um, about a partnership I'm trying to, we're trying to provide these things in a, a, a way that's fiscally sure. not going to blow the entire budget. So partnerships are going to be key. And luckily, the, the things that we've done in Douglas County over the past year for the transit master plan and what we're doing for the rest of the year with these new routes is bringing some attention from ATL to us. And so that helps people pick up the phone a little bit easier for, for that helps my job anyways. So... That's, those are some things that we were, we were actually looking at. Um, okay. And that would satisfy a good deal. Um, South, Cobb, uh, South Cobb is building a new transfer center um, on their stakeholder group. They're looking at building that in Austell Road. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a couple of years before that, that takes place. But that's a great connection for us because it's right there. It's going to be right there somewhere near the hospital. And that could, that could be a future route for us. It's just... It takes a little time for these things to take place, but 
on the site selection, I made sure they picked one that was as far west as they, they could. Sure. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for that, Director Roberts. Um, and next, we're going to get a fire update from Dr. Miles Allen, our new fire chief. So, clap it up for him. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. So, uh, uh, my name is Dr. Miles Allen. I'm the fire chief for the Douglas County Fire Department. And I'm here to just give you a, a brief overview of what we got going on in the fire department. Um, so just to let you know, uh, District 2 has uh, two fire stations right now. Uh, we're working on the third fire station, which will be at Douglas Hill and Thornton Road. Uh, that station is going to be basically uh, scaled for the industrial area, but uh, the plan for that station is to uh, run a fire engine, a ladder, a EMS unit, and possibly a, uh, a, a rescue unit uh, running out of that, that station. Uh, right behind us here, we have fire station number one. Uh, that one pretty much covers the north side of I-20 within Lithia and Thornton Road. Uh, then we have fire station number six, which covers the Riverside area, and that covers the south side. Um, Currently, we have roughly about 187, 190 uh, active firefighters uh, working. Uh, that doesn't include our staff personnel. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, young, old, uh, men, women, and child. Uh, so uh, we have a full, full staff uh, running our, our county and taking care of the things that we got going on. Uh, we, get, we get fire trucks coming in every now and then, uh, brand new ones. Uh, uh, to help uh, bolster our fleet, 80% um, of our calls happen to be medical calls. And so uh, that runs normally uh, through trauma, our, our elderly uh, slips and falls, and the other 20% will be our fires, um, vehicle fires. And if you haven't been watching the news, we've been, we've been, uh, we've been pretty bad in the county lately with fire. So we're in the season right now where we're in the no burn from uh, this uh, one, 1 May to 30 September. And uh, during this time, we also get a lot of accidental fires because people still don't heed the, the, uh, the rules for the no burn. So um, there's, there's, there's not a whole lot to, to say. We are 24-7. With the help of E nine one one, they take all the calls. Uh, everything starts with them, and through them, they route everything to us. Uh, they just not only do uh, fire, but they do uh, law enforcement. Whether you're talking the city or whether you're talking the county, so uh, there's not a whole lot going on with us other than we're we're twenty four seven. So um, I'm I'm open for anything. Any questions that anybody has. That makes it real easy. <laughs> makes it real easy. So, uh, well, thank you. I mean, we'll have something at the end. I'll be here for the duration. And I noticed that uh, we do have uh, Director Hartley in the back as well from E911. So if anybody has any questions specifically about the work that they do, their state-of-the-art facilities that are coming, any updates, anything that you wanted to go over? No. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you had your moment. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is talk to um, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, and she's going to give us an administrative update. So good evening, everyone. I am so happy to see you all here tonight. I get excited. I think we all get excited. We get to talk about Douglas County. So we are excited, and we're excited to have you here. First of all, I'd like to just thank Commissioner Kenner Jones uh, for putting this together. I mean, this is an amazing panel. She's done such a great job. And uh, she's hit the ground running serving the citizens of District 2. So thank you for putting this together. 
I also want to thank all of the staff that is here. We have had a very busy couple of weeks. We have had swearing in, state of the county. We had inside Douglas County art shows, mattress giveaways, senior events. And so I just want to thank you. I know it's been a long two weeks, a lot of late events, but I am very grateful for all of your contributions for helping to get this event and all other events together. So thank you so much. So I am not gonna keep you long. I'm gonna give you guys some general updates of some things we have going on in the county on behalf of the county administration office um, and the county administrator, Dr. David Corbin. So you're already there. So one of the things that we've done in the past year is the county went through a reorganization. Uh, there was a deep look into the, in the organization just to look at efficiency and effectiveness. And one of the things that the county administrator um, set up is a new managing director division for our county. And if you'll look at the um, <coughs> org chart behind us, you'll see that there are seven, we now have seven service divisions, and I'll briefly name those. Uh, intergovernmental services, community services, which is head by Dr. Consuela Gilchrist, uh, our public safety services, our fire chief has that division. Uh, financial services, our chief financial officer who is speaking at Citizens Academy right now, uh, Dr. Um, Mr. Dominic O'Shea, he has that division. Um, transportation services, which is headed by Suleiman Rana, he's the managing director. Uh, general services, our managing director, Ms. Danielle Nichols is here. And then last but certainly not least, uh, our managing director of development services, James Worthington. So I want to thank you all for your leadership here in the county. Next slide. So I wanna talk a little bit about um, some of the things that we're doing here in the county. Um, as most of you know, we did pass our strategic plan back in September of 2021, Douglas Ford 2025. And in that strategic plan, there are six, and you'll just have to click them as they go. There are six um, strategic priorities. The first one is public safety. The second is infrastructure. Third is economic development. Fourth is public health. Fifth is recreational facilities and programs, and then of course, transform Douglas County. From that strategic plan this year, the Board of Commissioners passed the Douglas Ford Reinvestment Plan. This is a $100 million plan um, where we are reinvesting $100 million back into the community over the next 36 months. And I'm proud to say in just a short period of time, there's already been a $30 million investment into the community, and I'll go into a few of those things um, that have been allocated. Next slide. Like I stated earlier, the citizens of Douglas County said that public safety needed to be our number one priority. And this year, the Board of Commissioners made a commitment to public safety by raising the starting salaries for our sheriff's deputies and our jailers in detention. So you'll see on the screen, our sheriff's deputies are at 58,500 and our jailers and detention officers start at $51,856. This is very important because it made Douglas County second in all of the metro region as far as pay of sheriff's deputies. So that's gonna make us competitive and able to re retain talent. And it has been working. We've seen an increase in the number of officers that we've been able to hire. Next slide. And we're also investing in all of our employees. One of the things we announced last night, and I'm so excited about this, is our new Douglas County Edge program. And this is a program that we will use that will help to develop our employees with leadership training, um, the, giving them the tools that they need to succeed in the county as well in their workforce. Um, and I'm just excited about this because this shows the Board of Commissioners' commitment to making sure that employees are retained and also that they have the knowledge that they need to be professionally developed. <clears throat> Next slide. All right, so we talked about the reinvestment plan. One of the things that we are doing is you're gonna see a lot of dirt moving here in Douglas County. And so as far as infrastructure, we have a few buildings that we are going to start building this year. First is the landfill transfer station. Next is the coroner's facility. There will be a new coroner's facility coming online at this year. Um, there is also going to be a state-of-the-art backup E911 center for our, I know she, listen, we were giving, it's going to happen. And then we've got a new DLT administrative building for our DLT team members, so this is a great accomplishment for us here in Douglas County. I'm going to briefly, I'm not going to, um, Suleiman already told you about a lot of the transportation projects, but these are some important projects. The Stewart Mill intersection project. Um, it is a $2.6 million project that was concluded. I uh, know former Commissioner Carthen, she, that, that was her, her baby and that was completed. And Suleiman Runner, they did a great job. I live close to that and I feel so much safer when I go by there. So that was a great project. 
And then $21 million for Lee Road. I know y'all heard a lot about Lee Road, but that project is, is continuing. That is a very big project, not only for Douglas County, but a lot for District 2. All right, next slide. And there are some more projects. The new Manchester High School sidewalk, uh, the Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard turn lane. If you live in Douglas County, we know that that's going to get things moving. Um, the spine road construction that Suleiman talked about, as well as um, there gonna be, there's going to be a roundabout at Banks Mill on Highway 5. So if you live in that area, you know how important that is. And so we've been able to receive a lot of funding from our federal partners. I will say Dr. Uh, Sel um, Suleiman Rana is excellent at going after funding. And he, he really, I'm serious, he really is. He knows where it is. And so he's been able to get us some $6 million for Lee Road expansion as well as another million dollars for the Lee Road phase one. And a lot of that is thanks to Congressman Scott. So we have to give him a, good, a great thanks for that funding. And next slide. And so there's also going to be some investments in the areas of recreational facilities and programs so that we can continue to have art, sports, and all of our culturally enriching programs. And of that, you're going to see some investments coming online. We're getting a new senior center on Fairburn Road, um, and it is $3.9 million, and that senior center is being funded totally by state and federal grants. So that's a great thing for our citizens. The Selman Drive Library, a $5 million renovation for that library. And then Winston Park, $5 million renovation for that park as well, as well as Boundary Waters will be getting a renovation, $1.5 million. So you'll see some dirt moving projects moving here in Douglas County this year. Next. And then I always have to talk about our youth. We are working hard to invest in our youth in Douglas County. We have programs like our Youth Commission, which is our, it's like a nine month program that high school seniors, I'm sorry, sophomores to seniors go through and they get to learn about public policy they meet our directors they do um service to the community. They go to the Capitol. Uh, former Representative Bode, he hosted them one time when they came to the Capitol. So they get a lot of good experience, um, volunteer experience. And um, I will say, if you go to the next slide, slide um, our Youth Commission Chairman, Mr. Andreas Garcia, he is a senior at New Manchester High School. And the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia each year gives a, an award to one singer throughout the whole state. Every 159 counties gets to submit one where our Youth Commission Chairman, he won it this year. So we just were in Savannah, and that is, he won it and at the conference in front of everybody. It was a great thing. He didn't know he was going to win, so he was really shocked when they called his name and he got to go up on the stage. So that is a great thing. And last, um, we have our internship program. You can go to the next slide. So we are now hiring summer interns, paid internships. So if you know any high schoolers or any college students who are residents of Douglas County, the application went live yesterday. So tell them to go on and apply. And we will be placing students throughout the county, different um, departments. They've done everything from the DA's office, uh, information services, county administration, keep Douglas County beautiful. We try to we try to place them where their interest is. Um, we do our best to do that. So and it was a it's been such a great experience. Um, so many of our interns have gone on to work in the county, and that has been and they are really really good good people who work in the county, and they've been here. So we're excited about that. And I think that's all that I have. I just wanted to give a brief update. So I will open the floor for any questions that you may have at this time. Come on up. The paid internship for the youth, how are you getting information out to them? Yes. So I know that our Youth Commission um, program um, leader, um, Amaji Stewart and then um, Leland, they made sure to get that information to the high schools. It just went live yesterday, so I will have to make sure, but we will get it to the school so they can put it in their newsletter. That's typically how we... we um, we get information out to students about our county programs. Now, of course, the school has to approve it, but they typically do. Okay. But we'll do that. And we have, we'll, we'll have it online, and there'll be some social media posts and things of that nature to get it out. So, But please tell them, because we want them to work with us. So. Got you. So you're partnering with the school board to get the information out? Yes, we will. We're going to partner with their communications. Um, what, Portia. Portia Lake is who we work with to get the information out. So we typically have like a weekly newsletter that goes out. I'm sure you guys have kids, so you know, and, and it has information in there. So we're going to try to do that is what we normally do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, yes. Um, so that we can make sure that that's also. We can do that. We can get that information and send that out. And but we'll put it in the his happenings newsletter and different things of that nature. So. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you all so much. And if you all need any more information, please go to DouglasCountyGA.gov. We recently changed the name. Our communications director brought us into the 21st century. So uh, go to DouglasCountyGA.gov and all of this information. You can find the contact information for everyone up here if you have any questions. Thank you. One last time, are there any other questions before we move to um, constituent services? Come to the mic, please, dear. Thank you. I just have a couple questions in reference to District 2. Uh, <laughs> so I guess anybody can ask, ask them, ask the questions, but specifically you. Road repair. So that, are you meaning the things that Director um, Rana Mentioned. So when you go out right here to Munyer, it's a bunch of pot, potholes. They come out and they you repair them, potholes again. Yes, um, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but uh, yeah, we have an active crew that's responsible for that maintenance. Uh, if you've got a specific concern, I'd be happy to take it down after this and get it uh, taken care of. Usually we do, we did, we, and this is just some side information, we do roughly 3,000 potholes in a year, historically. This year, we're already at the 2300 mark. Uh, we're about four months in. So we're doing, making great progress in terms of pothole repairs. Um, and then uh, our, our turnaround time is roughly three weeks on a regular complaint. So as it comes in, we're able to address the complaint within two, three weeks. And I'd be happy to take care of the ones that you've got today. And can you please, um, just for the people in the room and for people who may be listening, give the information about where they can go to right. make those complaints, what the contact number and information sure. is? So the complaints can be made on our website. If you go to Douglas County, uh, uh, douglascounty.goe, uh, there's a transportation or road conditions page. There's an email that you can use to type up your complaint. There's a phone number that you can call and record uh, the complaint. And either way, it's a shared recipients that uh, Get, their, uh, get the complaints right away. And give the website one more time. DouglasCountyGA.gov, and then you just have to go to the road conditions section. Thank okay. you. So my next, next one is tree trimming. So who do we contact about tree trimming? Because I did notice right here on Skyview, somebody came out within the last two weeks to trim all those trees in front of our subdivision that was up against the power line. So who do we contact, or how do, are you guys addressing the tree trimming? Right, that's me again. Uh, I'll give you my personal email after this, but uh, and regardless, uh, we've got a separate crew within the DOT umbrella that's responsible for uh, tree mowing. Right now is the hot season, and it's going to be that way for the next few uh, uh, few months. We contract roughly two to three hundred miles of roadway. Remainder of the five hundred is within our DOT in-house crew. So. Um, there's roughly, uh, we've got set cycles that we go around the county. So if we're in your area and you feel like your area is being met, missed, please report it to the same uh, uh, concern or report, reporting mechanism that I just mentioned and we'll be happy to take care of it. The only thing, or the only time it gets very tricky is, is so you gotta understand sometimes it's within the city or GDOT right of way or if there are power lines, those are a few limitations that we kind of have to look at and sometimes we omit as we're going through our cycles. But uh, if you've got a specific area you want us to look at, I'd be happy to take a look. My last one. Um, she did speak briefly on infrastructure, but I want to know where I can go specifically for District 2 to know what's going on in District 2 with infrastructure. I know we discussed the county, but I'm specifically interested in District 2. Is there something specific as to infrastructure, like road development or, or all these warehouses? I mean, at what point are we going to stop with the warehouse? So that's a good question that is actually spread across both um, of these individuals because a part of that is an issue of planning and zoning. And so you kind of have to understand a historical basis for how we ended up being developed with all of the warehouses. That's a conversation that I've had on multiple occasions. That was one of the very first things that I did um, was a ride around with um, Director Duncan um, and James to make sure, one, that I had a, a, a layout of how many are actually here so that we have that advocate, advocacy component of that taken 
taken care of when they come to the Board of Commissioners meetings and they want to present um, rezoning requests and things like that. So I, we're on the same page. I got you with the, the warehouse situation. Um, but in terms of an actual overlay for the, commu the community, it's really important that we're paying attention when they are posting these notices. Um, at one of the things that I probably, that I want to do is to start a quarterly um, newsletter to see if, if that's giving people enough information. If they like it, then we can roll it out more frequently so that you are aware um, of what is coming to the area. That's part of the reason why we had to sign up tonight so that we can start compiling a database of those email addresses and phone numbers so that we can get the information directly to you, um, especially when there's a hot issue that's going to come up on um, the agenda that's coming before the Board of Commissioners so that you have an opportunity to get the information. Of course, you can always watch on GOTV. If you can't come in person, we recognize that people cannot always be there um, in person. Um, my email address is also on my cards. I'll make sure that I give you one if there's something you can, are concerned about. Of course, definitely reach out. But then there's also the administrative component that goes in with the strategic plan. And so when they are having planning sessions, it's really important to come and participate in that feedback. And then they do town halls and things like this regularly so that you can get a little bit more clarity about specifically what's in your area and then a general overlay of what's happening throughout the county. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. And of course, if either one of you want to add to that, please feel free. Hello, good evening. First, thank you for having this because this is my first time like actually being involved in something like this in a community. Riverside Drive, <laughs> Fairburn Road and Thornton Road. Riverside Drive, very small with the trucks on both sides and they're building and building, but they're not widening the road. What are we going to do about that? Um, you may have addressed it, and I just we wasn't here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'd be happy to take that one. So Riverside, it's certainly, you know, it's, it's going through some growth pains. That's, uh, that's a shared pain across the county. The only issue we, uh, I, I think it ties into our larger discussion of uh, the limited funding that we have to support the demand that's out there. Uh, Riverside is certainly in need of a full-fledged widening. Um, there are smaller improvements that, you know, we as a county have made at Riverside at Thornton. There's more coming through GDOT uh, by summer to fall of this year. And then there, when developments come in, they would make minor adjoining improvements. But as a whole, if you were to look at widening the full road, it would cost you somewhere from 60 to $70 million and, and plus, depending on when you do it. So. If we were to undertake a project like that, I think the first question would be establishing additional funding to support these widening or mega infrastructure projects. So right now, there are no major plans for full widening, but that could change as, as we you know, entertain more options in the future. But we're still building in that area, like, like super building. Right. And then you have those semi-trucks. Who do we report those semi-trucks that sleep on the side of Riverside? Yeah. So I can address a couple of those questions. Um, in regard to the, uh, it's a little awkward. In regard to the uh, building, um, so much of Riverside Drive actually runs through the city of Douglasville, right? Have you ever looked at a map of Douglas County and where the city limits are? Because if not, let's sit down and have a conversation about that. Um, but many years ago, the city of Douglasville annexed from you know downtown down I-20 through the state park, and so there's 2,000 acres around tributary. That's the city of Douglasville. Right, so that means the Board of Commissioners does not control the land use on either side of Riverside. Right, so that's that you would need to be talking to the to the City Council and to our counterparts in the city, and I would be happy to give you their contact information if needed. Okay. Um, in regard to trucks, uh, if you have a, a truck, like if you see areas where trucks are sitting on the side of the road, um, chances are our Chief Code Enforcement Officer Russell Tazone already knows about that. But make sure you reach out to Russell and I can give you his contact information and let him know that this is an area where you see that that's a nuisance and you'd like to have him, you know, go and, and keep an eye on that area. Um, but I would also say if a truck is moving, right, that is not code enforcement, that's the sheriff's department, right? So we can deal with trucks that are parked in one area that they're not supposed to be parked in. But if it's a, if a truck that's kind of coming through a neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. where they shouldn't be or something like that, then that's the sheriff's department and you would need to report mm -hmm. that they're there. They're stationary. Yeah, but otherwise, you know, I would be more than happy to give you the contact information for our chief code enforcement officer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question, Cece? Any other questions? 
since the uh, director of transportation seems to get a lot of this, I've got one more for him. Um, I wondered what, I'm, I'm thinking of, of a road that is in bad need of resurfacing. It did, it was the same back in the early 2000s, 20, you know, 2002, 2003. I brought it to the attention of the Department of Transportation back then and have, I think I have a couple of times since then. And I know you guys know this road because you're out there filling the potholes at least once a year but still it remains unsurfaced. So I wondered what process do you go through to decide what roads you resurface each year? So uh, we do a, a five-year evaluation of roadways across the county. We call it the PCI, Pavement Condition Index. That tells you how bad each road is across the county. Um, and then we, we take that data and match it up with our resources for a given year. Let's say in 24, we had Splosh and Elmick funding to do a certain amount of mileage. And then we also, a factor of that decision is the complaints that we get on a regular basis, the amount of maintenance a certain road is requiring. And then with a combination of those few lists, we present a proposal to Board of Commissioners towards a fall or end of the year to, for the Board to accept the list and apply for a state grant. That's part of the funding that we use for resurfacing. And once that list has been finalized, adopted by the Board, that's what we advertise and resurface the following year. Okay. Thank you. Any other? I'll just ask, how do we advocate more for like our specific neighborhoods or areas if we want that to be put into your consideration? In terms of road resurfacing? Yes. Yes, so I'd refer you to, you know, Douglas County, GA.gov, and then if you go to the road section, there's an email inbox called road conditions at Douglas County, GA.gov. If you, if you report a concern, or a road that's in dire need of resurfacing, that's where we take the request and uh, compile it with our list okay. and track it as we go. Yes. And then y'all kind of like pick budget-wise yes. based off of how the volume of complaints? That is correct. Okay. And could you give that email address one more time? Road conditions at douglascountyga.gov. Any other questions? Well, we're going to take a few moments and hear from our Director of Constituent Services, Ms. Wendy Cottle. Good evening, everyone. So everybody's a little hot about the roads, so <laughs> let's see if I can cool, cool you down a little bit. So my department is Constituent Services, um, and we are the citizen's helper and advocate in navigating your county government. So uh, in my department, there's four key areas. We manage customer service for the entire county. We do our educational programming. We also do events, and we have a missing one. Oh, public outreach and community engagement, that one. Um, so I'm going to work backwards a little bit on that. So one of the things that we do is we know a little bit about a lot. So all the projects that you've heard these directors talk about today, we know a little bit about those. We can't get down into the details like like they can, but we can make sure you're informed and give you, you know, timelines and, you know, expected costs. So I'm saying all of this to say one of the things we do is we would be happy to come out to your HOAs or your community groups and um, give you um, updates on what's going on in the county. So that's part of our public outreach efforts. Um, we do events. So if you've ever been to September Saturdays, yes. Okay. If you've been to September Saturdays or the Veterans Day Parade or lots of other things that we've done, that's us. And I'm going to pause here to tell you about some of our upcoming events. So May is Older Americans Month. And we are happy, Dr. Gilchrist is clapping. <laughs> so we partnered with Senior Services. Um, and in our art gallery, yes, the courthouse has an art gallery on the third floor. And we do art shows six to eight times a year. Um, in this month's art show, um, all the pieces were created by our senior citizens. So please come. It's on display until the end of the month. Is there 30 days in May? It's 31. Okay, well, it closes the 30th. So <laughs> get there. 
get there before that third, the thirty first. Um, and it's free, 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 free. My favorite four letter word, free. Come anytime during courthouse hours to see any of our exhibits. Um, and to go along with those, we also do um, a reception. So the reception for the uh, for this art show is May sixteenth at six o'clock at the courthouse. And it's going to be special this time because not only will you be able to enjoy the art that our seniors have created, they will be singing and dancing. Yes, they will. And we also will give you a little bit to eat, not dinner, but you can have, you, yeah, you can have some refreshments with your entertainment. So that's May 16th. Um, at the table in the back, there's information about the art show and a lot of what all the other directors have talked about. Uh, there's um, information about what Director Rana talked about with all their sidewalks and widenings. Uh, we've got stuff from Connect Douglas back there. We have the Model Mile back there. We have Animal Services, which is coming up in a moment. Um, I think everybody who's spoken has something over there. So just browse. You don't have to try to remember everything because it's probably back there on the table. Um, let me see. Okay, and so I'm going to go back to the roads just real quick. I don't want anybody to get inflamed again. But I'm here to tell you there is a much easier way to report your concerns. So if you see that big blue banner back there, right there. That is our Citizen Service Center. It went online January 2nd this year, and it is a way to report non-emergency concerns. So the pothole that the lady was talking about, you can go there, it's on the website, you click either report a concern or there's a, um, a, a tab that says CS Center or C Citizen Service Center, I can't remember what it says, but Okay, they're saying the second one, but I don't remember what I said now, but it's up there. If you go look and click, if you're having a problem, go find that, click it, and it'll show you all the options. It'll put up a map, and that way if you were driving down the road and you say, ooh, um, there's a pothole there um, at... Douglas Boulevard and whatever the other thing is, you can go click right here is where the pothole is. You put a pin on it, okay? And then it'll get routed to uh, Suleiman and the people who can fix it. It really, it will, it will get to them. Um, so if you can't find on the website what he said, what he said, you can find that. That's a big. That's a big banner. It'll be easy to see. You don't have to, you know, go through the department and try to remember. Because transportation, particularly, they have a lot of information on their page. If you've ever looked at their page, they got a lot of stuff there. So you're gonna have to read. But it's there. Um, but if you don't have time to read, click that. It'll step you through it. Now, please fill out all the information because, see, you can go back and see the status. You can see if somebody even looked at it because when they look at it, it acknowledges it. You can go back and see. It show you the date and everything, the time that they looked at it. Then when, it's, when they start the work, it'll show you the work has been started, and then when the work is completed, it will say it has been completed. Now, my team is looking at all of that. So if their team is not putting the uh, request through the process, they get a, a wonderful phone call from us. And it's always lovely to talk to them. Sometimes they just, you know, need a reminder. We're all busy, right? But they're really pretty good about it. So that is how you can see what is happening. Now, someone else, you were talking about, um, Allison was saying, well, that part of the county we don't control, right? even though it looks like it's smack in the middle of the county, right? Well, guess what? If you try to click on, I saw a pothole here, and it's, but it's really in the city, it'll tell you, you gotta go call the city, I'm sorry. You know, and here's the number. 
we'll give it to you. So again, you don't have to guess and wonder, oh, well, I, you know, told somebody, I sent the email, but I don't ever know what happened. It'll say, call, this is the city's jurisdiction. You need to call, blah, blah, blah. And, and there you go. It, Hopefully, it'll make things a lot less frustrating. Now, it's not just road things. If the coyotes are running through your backyard, because Vanessa has that happen, you can go on there and say, we saw the coyotes. Somebody needs to come and get it. And you put your pen there or whatever, whatever it is. Um, what else do we do? Just the truck parking. The truck parking. Yes. You can go on there. The truck has been here for three days. Whatever it is, it's right here. It goes over to Russell. Their folks will look into it, and they really do get, they get on it. Um, and again, you can follow right along with it. So please use this service. Use it. Uh, that way, you won't have to track people down and, and wonder, well, what happened? Because this process is supposed to streamline all of this stuff, right? So everybody's kept informed and the work is actually getting done. So one, the last thing I'll say about it is this is non-emergency, okay? So Director Harley back there, we're also trying to make her life a lot easier because people would be calling her saying there's a pothole or there's the coyotes in my backyard. And you know, when they have real life saving things to attend to. So, not anything non-emergency, you can report there. And even, I know I said this was the last thing, but even we even have one that's for, um, it says general. So if you just wanna make a comment, you can make a comment. Or if you wanna, you know, you don't, whatever your thing is, is so specific, you don't see it come down in the menu, you say it there and we'll try to get you to where you need to go. All right, Citizen Service Center. The cards are back there if you wanna pick one up and um, you can scan the QR code and just take it with you. Um, so programs, programs are also in my department. So I'm so proud when you saw Andres up here, the young man who won the award. He was, uh, he's one of our youth commissioners. So that program comes out of our department. And we also had the Citizens Academy, which is for you guys. So you've gotten a brief, you know, snapshot tonight of what's happening. But if you want to have more in-depth knowledge about how the county works and the why, which is a big thing, right? People are wondering, well, why does it take so long? But, why, you know, if you have the money, why are we waiting? You get to know the why. So that program is going on right now, but um, we will let you know the next time it comes available. And speaking, going back to Youth Commission, the, those applications will open this month is May, May, June, July. Youth, applica youth Commission applications will open in July. You will go online to apply for, for that as well. We take high school sophomores through senior. And one of the wonderful things about the Youth Commission is if they've gone through that program, it gives them just a little bit, just a tiny, don't go, you know, please hear me. It gives them just a tiny leg up when they come back to apply for the internship because we've worked with them for a year. That program is a school calendar year. So we've worked with those kids for a year. We kind of know their um, temperament. We know what they're good at. We know um, work ethic. So when internships come around and they apply, um, we say, okay, he would be great here. She would be great here. Um, so Youth Commission in July, that application opens. And I guess that is it. All right. All right, here we go. Anybody want to say anything to me? You can just meet me at the back if you want to sign up for the... Volunteers. Yes. Volunteers.
Well, all of this is clearly on-the-job learning, and I did not know that we needed to open with Wendy's Comedy Club from here on out because I had no idea what to expect. Um, but something that um, she said did make me go back to um, your question, Cece, about what is where and who is doing what. The way that the city annexed in that portion of Douglas um, County into the city cannot happen anymore, um, thanks to great pieces of legislation. And that's why it's so important to know your representatives and come to the meetings. And so now they cannot do that pass through um, rezoning. So an issue like that, where you're in the city, in the county, in the city, in the county, in that short of a space should not really be happening. I do also know that planning and zoning is working very hard on some of the areas that are in the center of the city of Douglasville but are still unincorporated county so that we can clean up that issue too so that residents know who to actually go to when they are having an issue and kind of quell some of that confusion. So hopefully that will help as well. Um, I will stop running my trap at that and thank everybody so much for coming out. Can we please give all of our directors a great round of applause again. Um, I do have cards. If anybody needs um, my information or ways to get in touch with me, please come over here. I would love to hear from you. And again, I do have cards to give you. Thank you and have a good evening.